Hello and welcome to this monday.com tutorial where we're going to show you how to set up monday.com for brand new users. So if you've never used monday.com by the end of this video, you'll have everything that you need to know on how to get started with it. I'm going to show you how to get signed up, how to get started with monday.com and everything that you need to know as a beginner using monday.com getting started and signing up. So first things first, you're going to need to create an account for yourself on monday.com down in the description. We will have a link to get started. So go ahead and click on that link and that's going to bring you to this page right here. Once you're at this sign up page here, we can go ahead and just click get started. Go ahead and either sign in with Google or type in your email address and follow me along. So it's going to ask you for your full name, password, and an account name. And then it's going to ask you what brings you here today, whether that's work, personal, school, or nonprofits. We'll go ahead and select work. It's going to ask you what best describes your current role. So go ahead and select that and hit continue. It's going to ask you how many people are on your team and how many people work at your company. Then it's going to ask you to select what you'd like to manage first. So we'll go ahead and select operations. Then it's going to ask you what you'd like to focus on first. There's a ton of different options here. Go ahead and select the one that makes the most sense for you. This demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and select project management. And lastly, it's going to ask how you heard about us and we'll go ahead and just put YouTube. And then it's going to ask you here who else is on your team. We're just going to go ahead and ask them to remind me later. Now it's going to ask you to create your first board and we'll go ahead and just type in test board here and we'll go ahead and just click next and we'll go ahead and just select projects here and for a view layout we'll just select table for now and it's asking just to list your projects again we're going to set this all up here in just a little bit and here's asking to get started with some automations go ahead and just hit get started with that one that they are suggesting now that we are all signed up we are inside monday.com and so to start things off i thought that it would be helpful to sort of give you an overview of the hierarchy inside of monday.com so that you can understand how it works and how to navigate it so you can get the most out of it and be more productive in your business. So at the top of the hierarchy is the homepage, which we're on right now. So if you click over here on the left hand side, you can see that we are here at the homepage. So this is where you can see your recently visited pages and your update feed, also known as your inbox so that you can quickly access your recent boards, inbox and any current workspaces that you have. Next on our hierarchy, we have workspaces. So workspaces serve as the top level of your account where you manage boards, documents, dashboards and projects. Larger organizations might use workspaces for different departments, offices, or business extensions. So as we can see, we have our main workspace here. If we wanted to add another workspace, let's go ahead and we can just go ahead and call this marketing add workspace. And then any board document or template dashboard that we create is going to be under this marketing workspace. So let's go ahead and create a new workspace here for an imaginary company that we're going to start called the hat haven. So by clicking next to this marketing here, go ahead, hit add workspace. We'll call this the hat haven and we'll go ahead and add that as a workspace. Now, if we click these three dots next to the workspace, here's where we can change all the settings for that specific workspace. We can rename that workspace. We can change the icon as well as change the background color of that icon. Let's go ahead and change that to this blue color here. Actually, let's go ahead and change it to this more magenta. I like how that kind of pops. And since this is for a hat company, we'll go ahead and select the crown. We can also manage the workspace here. So when we click on that, that brings us to this page here where we can select the different boards, add any menu members and permissions as well. Back in those settings here, we can go ahead and delete the workspace here, add a new workspace, browse all workspace. We can collapse all the folders and view any archived or trashed workspaces. Now that we have created a new workspace for the Hat Haven, let's go ahead and take a look at boards. So inside of your workspace, you can create different boards and boards can be used to manage different things and you can decide what it is that you want to manage with each specific board. So let's come here and hit this little blue plus sign to create a new board and we can see all our different options here and we're going to go ahead and select new board so you can select what it is that you want to manage you can select from items budgets employees campaigns leads projects creatives clients tasks or create your own custom property to manage within a specific board you can also choose if you want to make this a shareable board if this is something that you need to share with clients or customers or other team members so for this let's go ahead and we'll just select items for now and click create board now that we have this new board created, let's go ahead and just look at some of the settings. So again, if we click on the three dots next to this new board, we can see that we can open this board in a new tab. We can rename it. We can move this to a different folder or to a different workspace. We can change the board type, either change it to shareable or change it to private. We can add it to our favorites. We can duplicate the board. We can save this board as a template. We can also delete it or archive it. It's on the monday.com hierarchy, we have groups. So the data within your boards are 
managed by different groups. So you can see that we have this group up here with the blue color associated with it. And we have a, another group down here with the purple color associated to it. So for this example, we are going to create a group for each of our different products to track customer feedback in the Hat Haven business. So let's go ahead and rename this board to customer feedback. And we're going to go ahead and change these group titles to different products. So we'll go ahead and call this the signature snapback and we'll call this the best beanie. So now that we have these two different groups created, we can rearrange their order however we'd like. So if we want the best beanie on top, we can just grab it by the name and drag it up above. Now, if you click the three dots next to each group, you can go ahead and change any of the settings related to that group. So we can collapse this group. We can collapse all groups. We can select all items. We can add a group, duplicate this group. We can move this group to a different board. We can rename this group, change group color, export to Excel, connect to any apps, delete it or archive it. So next on our monday.com hierarchy, we have items. So within each board and within each group, we have different items. And this is how we are going to organize the data within our groups. So for this board, let's add our customers names for each product to track the customer feedback. Now that we have a couple different customers in here to track our customer feedback, we can see these three dots next to each item. And if we click on that again, we can see the different settings that we have for each item. We can open that item into full screen. We can open it in a new tab, move it to the top, to a different group, to a different board. We can duplicate it with or without the updates, which we'll get to in just a second. We can copy the name. We can copy the item link. We can integrate it with some other apps, add a sub item, create new item below, as well as archive or delete it. So next on our money.com hierarchy, we have sub items. If we hover over an item, we can see this little arrow to the left. And if we click on that, we're going to expand that. And here we can add any sub items to a specific item. So for this example, we don't need any sub items, but for projects with multiple steps or tasks, this is where the sub item feature can come in handy. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I went ahead and just added a test sub item. And as you can see, we see those three dots again. If you click on those, you have all these different settings for that specific sub item. You can open the sub item, open it in a new tab. You can move that item or that sub item. You can duplicate it, copy it, copy a link to that sub item, integrate with other apps, convert to an item or create a new sub item below as well as archive or delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these sub items because we don't need them. Okay, moving on with our monday.com hierarchy. If we navigate back to a specific item and we hover over it, we can see that we can open this up. And if I go ahead and click on that, we can see in this area here that we can add any updates to this specific item. So with updates, you can add just text. You can also select this add files button, add any files, any GIFs, emojis, as well as mention any team members who have access to this specific board and group. And up here at the top, you can also click on files. And so any files that are uploaded will be found right here. And then to the right, there is the activity log. So you can go ahead and see any changes that were made by anyone, what changes that were made, as well as just a log for the time and date that that happened. And now that we created an update, you can go ahead and see right here, this little comment talking bubble in the one sign there. You can see that there is an update within there. And lastly, in our monday.com hierarchy, we have columns. So in this example, we can select different employees who are going to be responsible for this customer, as well as a status column to see the status of the customer's feedback, if we've reached out to them, if they had an issue, so on and so forth. So here we can see that there's already a column for person. So in here, what you could do once you have your team members inside of money.com, you can go ahead and search for that specific person. For now, we'll go ahead and just search me startup wise as the person responsible for this. And for status, we'll go ahead and select working on it for this one. And we'll go ahead and hit stuck on this one. Now, something that's really cool about money.com and the columns within it, as you can see down here, we sort of have this visual chart to see the overall status of each item within a group. So if we were to add a, another item here and we were to select working on it, you can see now that two thirds of this bottom aggregation here is orange because two out of the three are orange. If we were to change this to done, we would see a nice even distribution there. So it's just a really helpful way to visualize the status of all of your items within a specific group. Now, since this is a board designed to capture customer feedback, let's go ahead and add a column here for the customer feedback to live. So we'll go ahead and hit this plus sign here to add a column. And as you can see, there are tons of different options for columns here with inside of monday.com. They have the essentials up top here. They have super useful ones down below. And you can go ahead and search as well for any type of column that you're looking for. But if we click more columns down here, we can see even more columns here to fit just about any scenario that you can think of. All we need for this example here is a very basic text one. So we'll go ahead and hit add to board next to text. And what we're going to do here at the top is we're going to put in customer feedback. And we can also 
make these columns wider to fit the entire title as well as what's inside here. Now we can also change the settings of each column. So if we go ahead and click the three dots right here, there are settings for each specific column. So you can add a description, you can restrict column editing, you can restrict column view. You can also create filters as well as different sorting views. You can collapse it. You can duplicate the column and you can duplicate the column only or the column and the cell values. You can add a column to the right. You can change the column type. You can rename the column as well as delete the column. So that is the basic hierarchy of how Monday.com works. So to create this new board, we came over here and hit this little plus sign and hit new board. Now Monday.com also has tons of different templates. So if you hit this choose from templates, it'll bring up this screen here and they have all templates recommended for you. Then all these different, I guess, genres or categories to choose templates from. And these are really good to get started if you're unfamiliar with Monday.com or just getting started as it'll have instructions and visuals on how to get started with these different templates. Monday.com allows you to view your data in a lot of different formats for different needs. You can choose from the following. So right now you can see that we are in this main table view. And if I hit this plus sign, we can go ahead and add different views. So again, this is a table view. There is a Gantt chart, which is sort of like a timeline. There's a chart, there's calendar view, Kanban board, file gallery, form, as well as just a blank view. Now, one really useful view in monday.com is the forms view. So we're going to go ahead and click on a form view for our customer feedback board. And we're just going to go ahead and click on create your first form. So if we click on create the form, monday.com will automatically create a form with the columns in the board that we have created this new view for. So when creating a form, there are five different tabs up here. So the build tab, this is where you build out your form. This is where you can select which columns you want to have showing in your form in which columns that you want hidden in your form. And right here, you can see that saying restricted question type. So this is the person column. And how we're going to use this form is this is something that we're going to send to our customers for feedback. So we don't want them to see that anyways, we're going to go ahead and hit restrict form. What we're going to say is actually this is what we want to click is show questions. So we have that hidden. So this will not be shown. And also we don't want the status of this to be shown either. Now we have the person and the status hidden. Next under the customize tab, this is where you can customize your form. So here you can select which group from your board you want to add answers to. So if we come down here to monday.com settings, we can go ahead and select which board. Right now, we only want to have this customer feedback go to the signature snapback. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Now we can also edit the home screen here. We can change sort of the submission view, add any other form restrictions and create a thank you screen as well. Under the share tab, this is where you can get a link to send this form via a link to other various social media platforms. But if we go ahead and just copy that link, then we can go ahead and send that out to our customers. And here under the analyze tab, this is where you can see a summary the responses and any other analytics here for your form that relate back to this board. And lastly, under the automate tab, this is where you can automatically route requests, notify team members, update your project status and more. But we're going to go ahead and just leave that blank for now. So here is what that form looks like. So let's go ahead and fill this out real quick and see how this form works and how it relates to our board. So after we click submit, we can go ahead and come back to our customer feedback here. We'll come to this main table and we can see here now that we have this new entry here from Maggie Simpson. The hat was great. I wear it every day. So there are lots of different ways that you can use forms to get information from customers, from employees and have that information get directly into your monday.com project management. Next in our monday.com tutorial is automation. So you can either create your own custom automations or select one of the many templates. Automations help you streamline your work and cut down on the repetitive tasks so that you can get back to work. So let's create a super basic automation now. So the automation that I want to create is that whenever this status is set to done, I want to be notified. So to create an automation for a specific board, you need to be in your board. And you're going to come up here to this automate button. And we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to hit add custom automation when status changes to something. So we'll go status changes to done. And here under the notify, you can go ahead and add a message that will be sent every time that this happens. We'll go ahead and just leave that as blank. You can also auto populate it with fields from the board items and we'll go ahead and hit create automation. So let's go ahead and exit out of that and let's just change something to done so that we can see this live in action. There we go. And this just went from one to two. So now we can see automations. Hey, this is done and it gives me all the information that I selected to be in the automation there. Okay, moving on to integration. Monday.com allows for tons of integration. So for example, in case you want to take the 
previous automation to the next step. Instead of just sending a notification within monday.com, you could integrate your Slack account, for example, to monday.com so that when a status is set to done, you will get a Slack notification as well. So as you can see, there are tons of different integrations here for endless automations. If we click on the little integration here, you can see this is just a list of a few as well as some other apps within monday.com that you can choose from to take it to the next level. Another feature within monday.com is the ability to create docs. So docs live within a specific workspace. Let's go ahead and create a doc now for marketing ideas. So if you come over here and click on the blue sign, this is also where we created the new board. You can see new docs. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And we'll go ahead and type marketing ideas. And you can select for this to be main, private, or shareable doc. We'll just leave it as main for now so that everyone in my account can view it and hit create doc. Now this doc works just like a Google doc or a Notion page and it has markdown editing. So if you're familiar with Notion or markdown editing, you'll feel very comfortable here. Now they have some quick starters here so you can start from scratch. They have a meetings notes, template, to-do list, project plan, marketing brief, feature specs. So if you go ahead, again, if you're familiar with markdown editing, this will be very familiar to you. You just press the forward slash and you can choose from different titles, quotes, code, notice box, bulleted list, a numbered list, a checklist. You can add in boards, you can add in widgets, you can mention different docs, you can mention different people, add emojis. There are tons of different options here. So like I said, you can also insert boards from your workspace so that you and your team can see that data directly within the doc without having to switch back and forth. So let's say we wanted to see that customer feedback board and go ahead and just select board and then select which board that we want. So we'll select the customer feedback board. So dashboards are another way that you can visualize your data from multiple boards within your workspace. So this gives you and your team a great overview of all your different boards and all of your different data. To create a dashboard, we're just gonna hit that blue plus sign and we're gonna navigate here to new dashboard. We'll go ahead and just call it new dashboard for now. And once you're in this new dashboard, we're gonna navigate to the top and select which board you wanna connect to this dashboard. You can also select multiple boards to connect to this dashboard as well. So let's go ahead and just select the customer feedback for now. And after selecting which boards you want connected to your dashboard, it's time to select how you want to view your data. So to do so, just click on add widget. And from here, you can select the different type of view that you want for a specific board. Let's just go ahead and select chart for now. Now, monday.com automatically selected the status for this chart widget. But if we click on these three dots, we can come in here and change any settings that we want. So we can change the type of chart. We can select any sort of filters. And yeah, that's a basic intro on how to set up a dashboard. Let's come in here and let's add this other test board, which I don't even know what's in there. And now what it's doing is it is pulling from both of those boards from the test board as well as the hat haven board. So if we come in here, we can see that we have the customer feedback hat haven board up here. And then we have the test board from the main workspace board here. Another area of money.com is the my work section. So here you can see all the work that is assigned to you. And this makes it really easy to focus on only the tasks that are relevant to you. There are also multiple different views to see your different work. So let's go ahead and click on my work over here in the top left, just under the home. So we can view this either in this table view here, sort of like this date view. We can go by status view, priority view, board view, or single list view. I sort of like this date view. It has past dates. It has stuff that's due today and stuff that's due this week. So that about wraps up our monday.com tutorial, how to get set up for new users. If you want to get started with a monday.com trial, there will be a link down in the description for that. This link does help out the channel and allows us to keep making free videos just like this at no extra cost to you. So we really appreciate you using those links. I hope this video was valuable to you guys. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Here on this channel, we make lots of how-to guides and tutorials dedicated to helping out new entrepreneurs start their own business. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.